Hey guys, welcome to another part of the series, which is part 6. In this video, we are going to set up our navbar, and there are going to be few things that we will be doing in the navbar itself. Well, without wasting time, let's get into the video. If you have not accessed this playlist, click in the description, access the playlist right now. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please make sure to do it because more fun, more fun videos are coming in the future. Well, without wasting the time, let's get into it. So this is our VS code. In the last video, we set up our footer. In this video, we are going to set up our navbar. Well, there is a few things that we have to consider while setting up our navbar. We will not put our navbar into our components folder. And you may ask, why so well? There isn't like, okay, one second, let me just think about this one. So basically, uh, if the user is logged in, okay, let me just think about this one. Oh, yeah. So we can put our navbar into our component folder. Like why I was saying we should put it inside of a page folder because in the navbar we should show if the user is logged in, log out, register, login orders, blah blah, a lot of stuff, right? But the, another thing is that our token will be saved in the local storage and the, we cannot access local storage on the server end. So that means it's not really much of any use to put uh, the navbar into a page of a page folder while it doesn't have any work to do on the server side and also we don't want to route our navbar anywhere right because we don't want to go like slash navbar and they will show us our navbar so we will make a new component with the name of navbar.jsx same rfc's thing get rid of import react from react we did the same for this one also, right? Yeah. And now go back to tailblocks.cc. Go a little bit down. I think there is navbar somewhere. Okay, it's with the name of headers, right? So we have different type of headers. Like that, like that, like that, like that. And which one we will get? Uh, well, it depends which one we want. We can get this one. We can get this one. So what I have mostly seen where the logout stuff buttons are, they mostly are in the end and instead of being in the middle. So we can do this one. It looks pretty okay also. We can put it inside here and we can copy the JSX code. Go back there. Paste it with the navbar. Okay, change the text from tail blocks to programmers warehouse. Change this from button to cart, remove the SVG, and name it a zero for now, okay? Yeah, first link, second link, third link, fourth link. I will set it up in a minute, okay? Let's say for now we will just want the register login. Let's say we have those two only for now. Go back here, import navbar like that and if we now start our next application okay we should see our navbar right there right so this is our navbar this is our footer let's go back here let's do a few changes in navbar we want to add a CSS add a class here that would be cursor pointer so when we hover over over these things it should look like they are kind of like a buttons right here we have card zero. Doesn't look the best, it doesn't look really great, but doesn't look the worst one also, right? We also need to set up our logo. I will do that after some time, but for now it looks pretty okay, right? So what else do we need to do? Okay, we need to do a few things. So basically we're just saying whenever we log in the user, we will have a local we will have add a token in the local storage. So the token will stay in the local storage as long as we want it to because we can just remove it from the local storage whenever we want. Like whenever the user clicks on logout button, 
we can just log him out all right and what we do when I'm a user goes to any page like any private page like the checkout page or when a user is trying to add some items to its cart we will send the token to our server end and we will see if the token will have the token will have a JWG token which means it will have an expiration time if the token is expired we will send uh, a 503 request back and when in the client side we will detect a 503 request what we will do we'll just delete that token from the local storage and we will uh, log out the user so basically that's how we can how we can uh, you know make sure that user is logged in only as long as we want him to so what we can do here so we can just say if the user is logged in or not because if the user is logging logged in we don't want to show him this register or login uh, the, uh, links on the top right and this not this should not be a, a, a href link right it should be more like a what do we say it should be actually a link from next so we'll, we'll say import the link from next slash link so what it what this link does it will not reload the page it will just you know open that uh, register login component in the page itself without reloading the uh, top link okay we'll just copy it and uh, we will just change this a to like maybe a div no we'll change this a to span because okay i will need to make sure that you understand this one because this link will get you know uh will get converted into a href link once this all has been compiled using uh rushed because they don't use babel anymore i guess so it gets converted into a href link but with additional javascript that make sure that the page doesn't reload so that's the thing here we need to do we need to add here another component component of link paste it here we need to say href is equal to our registered component or what we can do we can just here put our registered component so it will just actually go to register component without changing the url on the top but we want to change our url on the top we want the user to know yeah we he has he's on the different page other than just do something like that so we'll just say take the user to uh, slash register okay so in react we just say link to but in uh, next javascript we just say link href link href is equal to slash login and it's not important to put those curly brackets you can just get rid of them but if it's put by default it doesn't really matter okay you can keep it and when someone clicks on the program warehouse the main logo stuff like that we want to do something what we want to do here okay let's change this one to link okay another thing to mention here you cannot add class name to this link because i already told you this link will be converted to uh a href uh element and whatever class name we have put it there will be removed so just don't put any class name into the link as an attribute so it will not work yeah that's the main thing uh it will not work so what we can do for now right here to make sure this is working fine we need to wrap all of this inside a link tag we'll say href is equal to you should be should user should be taken to the main home page if someone clicks there like that and the cart we'll just keep it empty for now if i go here or do a refresh if i you can see here they're just showing me some like text like stuff like that right but we want to change that we'll just say cursor pointer if someone hovers over this thing he should see something like this but if i click here okay my bad so if we click here it should take me to the main page right i'm already on the home page so that's why it's not really much doing anything and another thing about next.js if you will go to some route that is not there they should just show you a 403 pay you know error by default but we will add this error by ourselves later on because we will have a few things right okay so i think that is for this video we we'll set up our nav bar in this video and in the next video we will set up our actually product page okay the home main home page right 
so well yeah let's see you in the next pay next video hope you enjoyed the series make sure to subscribe like share this video i will see you in the next one have a good day